I came up with this idea and I set myself 24 hours to complete it. It was an idea that had been brewing in my head for a while and I really wanted to see it in 3D. What made it pretty difficult was I only had my laptop and I was away from my main PC. So to achieve this, I had to use some strange techniques. I didn't really care how I got there. I was just focused on the final visual. This involved cutting some corners. So I wonder if you guys can see what I did. Honestly, I was a bit surprised with the outcome. So I'd like to share the breakdown with you. So if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe it. I've got lots more videos coming on the games industry and they're all going to be for free. So with any sort of project I really uh, set the scope on this so 24 hours I started by getting a lot of still images and references and like you saw in the intro drew on top of those to get a better understanding of how I was basically going to tackle it. With the still images I arranged them in a way where the reference is basically pointing in a direction just so it's easier for me to understand. It may seem counterintuitive with such a fast project but it really does help. First I'll start the block out so it'll involve some basic shapes. At this stage I'm not too fussed about how it looks I just want to get some landmarks in that I can move. So I'll take some different shapes and I'll extend them and squish them with masks and reposition them with certain deformers to make it easier. I'll go back to the reference and just double check that I've got all the components. Again, this might involve putting in some basic shapes just so I can make sure they're in the right position. For hard surface, I'll use a lot of cutting and masking and especially for the trims when I extract that piece. I'll do this first so it transfers well when it comes to bending and deforming. I want to save time so I'll sculpt a bolt and then I can use that as an IMM brush and dot it around the sculpt. I'm going to get too elaborate with the stitch brush so I'll make one physical stitch and then move that and position it. I'll make a long string of stitches which I'll later use as the low poly. I even unwrap them first so it will save me some time. Finally I'll test out a couple of shaders and materials and I'll make sure the geometry looks nice when the light passes it. I'll also make sure that I understand any complex shaders I want to do. So this example is a fur shader, which I've got a video on. It uses something called a shell technique, which is popular in the games industry. So now comes the sculpting. At this stage, I'll focus on inserting landmarks with a hard brush, like a clay buildup, and use the clay brush to fill in more soft, natural sections. If I want to split parts of the skin, like wrinkles, I use damn standard. And I'll basically try and follow and replicate the reference as close as possible. So in the workflow, I know I want to texture this in Substance Painter. But while I'm in ZBrush, I'll basically put in some wrinkles and also use poly paint just to identify different parts of the mesh. And it's going to assist me along the way. Fundamentally, it's going to be a throwaway piece. So at this stage, I'm pretty happy how the sculpt's going. It's usually one of the faster pieces. And obviously, I can see Yoda straight away. Um, but I'm a little bit concerned that I've got two more quite intense technical shaders to come. So I'm going to test a couple of those out. So for the finer surface details, I use a texture map in substance with height information. I'll then paint any base color albedos and any custom maps that are needed for things like translucency. Roughness map is going to be important for realism. So I'll paint in any sort of wet areas and blend that back in. The potion is sculpted off to the side and I'll use radial symmetry, almost like a lathe pattern. And I'll position the fingers so it looks more physical. The potion is a little bit more complicated, but I'll be releasing another video on that. It's comprised of multiple layers and they all receive different types of shading information. And the inside liquid is just a boolean that cuts out so it's nice and level. For the label, I just extract some text from Photoshop, put it into substance and then erode it away with a mask. For this, I'll use a little bit of curvature map information, but the rest of it is basically going to be manually painted to give that weathered effect. For the chain link, I'll make one single chain link, rotate it 90 degrees. I'll then duplicate it and just put a little tiny bit of variance in. I'll then use a curve deformer to fit it back on. For the talisman, I'll add a basic metal material and then I'll use the curvature maps to add some oxidation. I want to see how this is going to be shining in the light. For the eyeballs, I'll use a toy shader and I'll just fill those in quite roughly. I'll then paint in any of the iris with a simple alpha brush. I'll later replace this with an actual texture and then just give it some highlights and a black border to enhance it. So if you're already a subscriber, you've probably seen this process before for the hair. I'll basically get some basic shapes, use Sculptress Pro and Snake Hook. I'll then use masking to basically give some visual layers and then I'll later replace that with an object. Duplicate it a couple of times with its striations and then place that back onto the model with the curves brush. So a little trick here, you can use poly groups, the move tool and move topological to position and layer that hair. I'll put a link below so you can check out that video. For the clothing, I really want to be time efficient. So I'll use masking. I'll clean that up and use extractions, maybe Z remesh it so I get a bit more information. I'll then put in any distant sort of details, clean it up with a pinch, then do any further cloth sculpting, which I also have a video on and I'll link in the description. The cloth material is a basic tileable height map. I'll then put some 
varied alpha information with procedurals and then maybe some dots for the dirt. Nothing special with the stitches, so I just used the basic substance painter one. For the sword, I made a block out in Maya just so I could get a very precise set of geometry. I don't want to really be sculpting the blade. Very quickly, I'll put some small details into the metal and it doesn't have to be higher resolution because you can't see it from a distance. For the gemstones, I use Trim Dynamic Brush and H Polish just to give it some faceted edges. To texture the handle, I let Substance do all the work, so it's a tileable fence alpha, and then I use an embossment with height map. With metal edgeware, I like to make two types of metal and then use a mask to basically bring them forth and back. Blade is making use of the original high poly, and then I'll just use sliders to locate certain curvatures. Time is running out, so I make some final adjustments with the formers. I'm not too worried if it breaks the mesh, I can just repair all that later. Right now I'm focusing on matching a very specific reference shot. In terms of project management, I've split each component onto its own Z tool. So this will save me frame rates when it comes to sculpting and it should speed up the baking and retopology process. For example, the potion and the sword will be made off to the side, but I can still see how it posed when I use the decimated version. So it's not over yet and I don't have too much time left. So now comes the fun part where everything's brought together and I'll add lights to showcase it. It won't take too long uh, building up the lights. I use a tried and tested process. So I've made a video on this process, which I'll be releasing in a couple of days. So make sure you subscribe and add the notification so you can see when it pops up. So all in all, it was a really exhausting project, but at the same time, it was really fun to see how optimized I could make a character. It's nice to focus on the final outcomes, especially if you're building your portfolio or just want to see a visual representation of something. The final result I found really funny and it definitely had me smirking along the way, which is really important when you're making characters, you obviously want to enjoy it. There's not too much low poly work on this, which is okay, because in the industry we usually outsource that. But if you're learning, I really suggest uh, have a full understanding of low poly and retopology. So I've got a couple of tutorials coming based on that Yoda breakdown. So make sure you turn on notifications to see when that comes. Uh, it could be that they're already released. So I'm just going to add those towards the end and also put it in the description. Also, if you go down to the 3D Mutiny website, you can find a free welcome package with information. I'll also be releasing videos that I wouldn't usually put on YouTube. We also have a Discord community, so people are getting art feedback and asking for help and basically posting their work in progress. Also, there's uh, some video ideas. So if you've got a video idea, just post it on there. I do look at it quite a lot. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.